This lesson is all about why fractions have to have common denominators when you're adding or subtracting. Let's say you're going to add three dogs and two cats. What label would your answer have? You can't really say that you have five dogs. You couldn't say that you have five cats. So what label do you use? Well, you could say that it equals five animals, or that it equals five pets, or five mammals. You could even say that it equals five quadrupeds. Each of these labels here are common denominators. Animals is probably the one that we would use because it's the least specific. It's the lowest common denominator. Now, if you're going to add fractions instead of just animals, you can think of the denominators as different labels. For example, you could say that three-fourths is like adding three fish and one-sixth is like adding one snake. Just like with the cats and the dogs, you have to have a common denominator. Now, before we go into why that is, we're going to have to uh, play around with some pattern blocks and we're going to name some fractions. So let's say that this funny little snowman shape is one whole. If I cover it with yellow pattern blocks, then each of those pattern blocks is one half. So a yellow is one half. It can be covered with four red trapezoids, so each of the trapezoids is one fourth. It takes six of these blue triangle or uh, diamonds to cover the shape, so each one of the blue ones is one sixth. And finally, we can cover that shape with 12 of these green ones. So each green triangle is 1 12th. So we can think of each of these pattern blocks as a different animal in a sense. So here we have the fraction again, the 3 fourths plus 1 6. Let's take a look at it with the pattern blocks. 3 fourths looks like this, plus 1 6 looks like this. We have to figure out what our answer, what label it would have. What do fourths and sixths have in common? Now, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that what they have in common is twelfths. We're going to see why, and then there's another video that will explain how you figure it out when you're just dealing with numbers and not with pieces. So, what does it mean when I say that fourths and sixths have twelfths in common? Let's take a look. Do you see how the green triangles very nicely cover up the red trapezoids? It also works with the blue diamonds. So we say that twelfths is a common denominator. Now, when we say that we've got twelfths as a common denominator, that changes the way our addition problem looks. It's no longer three-fourths plus one-sixth. It becomes twelfths as the denominator. However, we have to get different numerators. So let's see how we do that. There were three red trapezoids and each one is covered with three green triangles for a total of nine. So that nine, the three-fourths, becomes nine-twelfths. There was one blue diamond covered with two green triangles that equals 2, so the 1 6 becomes 2 twelfths. I always tell my students that they should write their addition problems with fractions vertically. Now remember, adding red and blue is like adding cats and dogs. You've got to get the common denominator. Here's how you're going to get your new numerator. Do you remember how many triangles covered the trapezoids? There was three on each one, so three times three was nine. And on the blue diamond, there were two. One times two is two. Add the numerators, keep the denominator the same. Nine plus two is 11, so the answer is 11 twelfths. Perfect. This video is just a short explanation of why a common denominator is needed when you're adding fractions. For a step-by-step -step instruction video on how to get a common denominator, click on the link that you see in the video description below.